Hi everybody, happy day after Father's Day for all of you who celebrate. Hope you had a wonderful day. Happy, happy and congrats to all the dads and grads out there. We're Chris and Steve from Eat, Walk, Learn, currently in Ireland. Woohoo! Woohoo! Uh, already had our first Guinness and, well not our first Guinness, but our first morning. Guinness. <laughs> and uh, not today. <laughs> right. And uh, we are very excited to be sharing with you all of the details of our previous walk along the Camino in Spain. Yeah, yeah, it was an exciting 14 days and sad to have it come to an end. It was a great experience. Uh, so how are we going to lay this out? So we, we've had hundreds of questions all over our social media about all kinds of how we did it, what we did it, why we did it, and so on. So we are going to answer all those questions with a little narrative and all the details, especially getting deep into the logistics. Here's our magic logician here who is uh, really going to give you all the questions, all the answers to all the logistic questions. And I'll kind of fill in with the narrative about the experience and the people and the things we saw along the way. So uh, we're going to start off with the first question of what, what is the Camino? What is the Camino? So the Camino is when people refer to the Camino, it means that they have walked a particular hike in Spain. So the Camino in, per in particular is actually about 12 or so different hikes that generally are in Spain. Some of them start outside of Spain, uh, mostly in France, and they make their way across Spain to the city of Santiago de Compostela. There is a large cathedral where um, St. James, St. Right? James is uh, uh, one of the apostles of Jesus is, is buried there. And it's been a, a holy religious site for hundreds of years and a place where uh, pilgrims uh, come and, and travel from all over the, the, the world, world. Mm -hmm. um, to get there to uh, to experience uh, this, this particular place. So historically, it has been a religious and a pilgrimage experience for people, but now it's a religious, spiritual adventure for us. It was kind of a, a, a lot of those. And as you walk along the Camino, regardless of which route you pick, you get a, a, a Compostela, which is a passport, and you go along and you get stamps from different hotels and bars and restaurants and things proving that you had walked along. And when you get to Santiago, you turn that passport in and they give you a Compostela, which is a piece of paper that officially says you have finished the, the Camino de Santiago. So for us, we decided to, to pick the Portuguese coastal route, which basically starts in Porto and moves along the coast and goes up to Santiago. Um, Steve's going to get into the logistics of where we started and so on, but just for you to understand, we went along the coast, uh, along the Portuguese beach, the Portuguese coast, and we picked that particular route because it was the most flat route with the least amount of elevation gain, although there is elevation gain because all a lot of the routes come together at one particular place, and from that place up to Santiago, you got some climbing to do, and we'll get into those details. Yeah. So, so, so why... Um Chris, yes. tell me why did you want to do the Camino? So a lot of you know I had a business in Denver and called Denver by Foot, and I was really well known as a hiker and an urban hiker, and I have guided thousands, literally thousands of people on thousands of miles of hiking through Denver, and metro, Denver Metro actually, and up into the mountains, and even um, around the world, uh, Scotland and, and Oaxaca, Mexico, Mexico. and I've got many, 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 many friends who have done the Camino and they could never understand that I hadn't done the Camino. They're like, you're this hiker and you're like, do all this hiking and you do all this long distance stuff and you've never done the Camino, like you don't have any cred. So <laughs> I felt like I had to cash in my credentials and go do the Camino and experience, you know, now that we live this lifestyle, we had the time and, and effort and energy to do it. And so that was the main reason why I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And how about you? You know, for me, uh, so one thing I need to mention is that you don't have to be Catholic to, to do this to do this route, to do these these trails. Um, in fact, you don't even have to, to hike it. There were a lot of people on cycles uh, that were doing it, and it was really fun to watch the cyclists. And you can also and, and bike, that. or you can, you can bike, uh, a boat. ride a boat, do it by horse, <laughs> ride a horse, do it by boat, or hike. So there's four right, different ways you can right, do the Camino. Right. So, um, so f for me, I really didn't have this on my radar, uh, radar, although I always wanted to do a multi-day hike. And this it was, you know, 14 days for us of, you know, being on the trail. Um, so, but last November, uh, Chris and I were, were on a uh, cruise 
and one of our stops was in Vigo, Spain. And there wasn't a lot happening in Vigo, Spain, so we decided to take the train, which is only like an hour and a half, or not even that much, to Santiago, which is where the end of the of the Camino is, the final stop, to kind of check out, you know, the, the 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 finish line, if you will. And what's this what's this excitement all about? We went there by train, just to the end spot, just for a few hours, just to 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 see how, what the excitement was. And it was exciting for me. And I and at that point, I was like, you know, maybe I want to do this hike. Maybe you really yeah. you there's know, a ton of energy walking into Santiago, yeah. and you yeah. kind of feel like you're. You're, it's FOMO. Like, I, yeah, I want that energy something. too. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And so it was at that point that I was like, you know, we need to put this on our plan to do for next year again. This is last November. It was really when we started planning it, really when we put the stake in the ground that says, you know, next next summer in June, we're going to do the Camino. So there's lots of ways you can actually do the Camino. A lot of people get the big backpacks, the 40 liter backpacks, and, and get uh, sleeping bags, and they, they camp along the way, or they stay in what are called albergues, which are like hostels for the Camino. These are large uh, pl or places that have large rooms with beds in them. A lot of people sleep in them. There's the communal shower, maybe a, a picnic tables outside for everyone to eat. And it's a, you might say it might be a snore fest for some people <laughs> um, to be in a communal uh, sleeping arrangement. Or you can uh, upgrade and do hotels or, or hostels. There's hostels as well, which might be a little bit of an upgrade from an Aubergy. And then, um, uh, Airbnbs as well. Because we had particular requirements, which Steve's going to tell you about, he's going to tell you how we did it all and what we did with our luggage, because we did not, we figured we're, we're over 50. <laughs> we don't need to carry 30 or 40 pounds on us, although there were a lot of people who were older than us yes. carrying those backpacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just wanted to carry a day pack of our, of our daily needs. And right, so we right. had to figure out how to portage all of our worldly goods. As you know, our two carry-on suitcases and our two backpacks uh, how to portage that from place to place. Yeah. How'd you do it? You know, um, so that was kind of like the first idea is that we want to have a company, and this is why we had to do the planning, to every day be able to pick up our luggage and take it where we wanted them to take it, where we were going to be the next day, uh, and drop it off so that when we got there, we had all of our clothes and every, you know, everything that we needed. Um, and the other thing that we decided was is that we wanted to walk at least 100 miles. Right. We thought you have that to, that was, in order to get that final piece of paper, the Compostela, from the from the sun, from the official people, uh, you have to prove that you've walked at least a hundred miles. So, hundred miles or hundred kilometers. hundred miles, <laughs> uh, and so knowing that we had a hundred miles, we had to walk. Plus, we had only a certain amount of days left to be able to stay in Europe because you can, Americans can only be in Europe for ninety days at a time in the Schengen district. Um, we had to figure out how many days we had left. How many miles to walk? How many days? You, how many miles we wanted to walk each day, and how many rest days we wanted to have in between? Right. So we set out a a pattern of we wanted to walk two days and rest a day. So walk two, rest one, walk two, rest one. So that so Steve figured out that would take how long? Yeah. So we figured out you know if we wanted to do a hundred miles, we wanted to walk about ten miles a day. We thought that that was a reasonable amount to walk, and particularly with our rest days, so we were walking two and resting one. That we could we could manage that ten miles a day. So I basically just pulled up a you know a, a Google Maps and said, "What's a hundred miles from, from here Santiago here. De, de Compostela?" And you know we started out we. Picked our first uh, starting point was Viela Viana Viana de Castello. Do Castello. Mm -hmm. Beautiful town, great place. In Portugal. In Portugal. Um, really enjoyed it. And that was our starting point. And then we went from there. Um, so the other way to, to actually to plan the logistics is I used one of these portage companies that was called Camino Facil. Um, we didn't wind up actually using them to do our portage, but we, they had an excellent website with a planning guide that you could, you know, do a drop down and say, where are you going from? What town are you going to, to where are you finishing the day and what hotel are you starting at to what hotel are you finishing at? And then you, you map out, you can map out the whole day. And that way you actually, you know, build your itinerary on their website and you do so the pricing along the way of how much it would take to do the portage. I actually did not wind up using that particular organization. I did the planning on their website, but there were a couple of things that were I was, that, that, that were nuances were with them mm -hmm. that were challenging and were gonna cost a little bit more. So I did a little bit more research and I found another organization called Pill... Um, Pillbao, P-I-L-B-A-O, right? Pillbao, yes, thank you <laughs> for that. 
And, uh, and they were fantastic. Every single day, we didn't have to worry a bit. We left our luggage in the lobby of the hotel. They picked it up at some point after we magic. left. And luggage it magic. was there when we arrived at our next hotel. We never had an issue, not one bit of concern that our place, our, that our stuff was getting from place to place. And I think what's important to point out here is um, because we were using a portage company, we had to plan ahead and hit our destination every day. And the portage company only drops the the luggage at hotels or Albergies. Right, we didn't want to pay, stay at Albergies, so we had to stay hotels and not Airbnbs. So our hotels were about, they were average about $80, $85 a night. And they give, the, Bill Bilbao just gave a list of hotels at the, at the different de destinations. We picked the hotel we wanted, we made a reservation, we told them, and off we went. So yeah, prior so to leaving, we had 14 reservations, or 10 reservations made. Right. Uh, one night, one night, two nights, a pattern, and everything was all planned out, all organized, and we gave the, the itinerary to them, and, and off we went, not having to worry about any of that. Yeah, of course, it was a little bit more complicated than that, because every night, we had to evaluate, you know, if there were, like, uh, you know, a dozen different hotels that this Portage company would drop off right. and pick up from, well, which one do we want to stay at? We wanted to stay at one that was close to the trail, that was close to the center of town, whatever municipality or village that we happened to be in that night, something that was around other facilities, a decent place. You know, we wanted to have, you know, we have, again, a certain level of standards of what we wanted to have, you know, a nice bed, a nice, you know, private bathroom. Um, and we picked a, a couple, or I should say, I picked a couple that were special. So a couple that were right on the beach with a beach view or a garden view or something. That but even had those weren't that expensive. They were maybe a hundred hundred right. dollars for the night. Right. So uh, the Albergies run anywhere from about six euro, so seven dollars to uh, twenty five. So you can certainly do the Camino much more cheaply than we did. That was not our goal to do the Camino cheaply. The, our goal was to do it comfortably. So. Anyway, I think, does that handle, does that manage all of our logistics? If you have any more yeah. questions about logistics, and, just and once, you, and once you have your route, again, for the for the transportation company, I basically sent them a little spreadsheet that says, here are the dates, here's where we're going, the pickups and the drop-offs, and they sent me a quote, and it was really reasonable. Um, well, I'll put the amount on the screen, because I don't remember offhand exactly how much that was for the 14 days, but everybody's going to be different, but it was, I thought it was and a they reasonable And they charge you per unit. So right. we had four pieces of luggage, and what we, we ended up going to Ikea and buying a little $4 duffel and putting two of the pieces into the duffel. So we eliminated, we went from four to three right. and reduced our cost by a quarter. So, or a third. Yeah. What would that yeah. math be? Anyway, we reduced our cost. So then <laughs> that was just made things a little bit easier. What did, know, what did we have in our bags? Oh, what did we well, actually carry with us the days that we were hiking? So uh, all of you who get very concerned about backpacks, uh, for us, we did not have the proper day packs in order to do a hike because we had like travel packs. And so we just went down to the local decathlon, which is like a, a Dick's Sporting Goods for all of y'all in the States. And we just bought two day packs and we each brought a pole. And I think one of us bought a shirt or something, but we were able to outfit ourselves very easily at the local, at one of the chain stores. And it didn't cost us, I think maybe we spent 30 or 40 bucks total yeah. for yeah. the two, two backpacks and the, and the poles and maybe a pair of socks or something. So uh, we each had day packs. Uh, mine had a bladder. Yours did not. Um, they were just normal, this like kind of a day pack that you would take to school for a book bag or something. And in it, we had snacks and uh, fruit and sunscreen and first aid kit, a headlamp. Yeah. I particularly uh, was, I was a little unsure about whether I had the right shoes. And so um, I actually carry an extra pair of shoes with me and it was great and some of the days that we thought it was going to rain or that we were going to be actually walking on the beach which is a couple of cases that you're actually walking in the sand on the beach um so i had sandals you know keen my keen sandals for those purposes and then i had good you know hiking sneakers uh for the rest of the time so so that was something that i had in my in my bag was an extra pair of shoes which i thought was a, a big plus and also you know again have the right you don't know where you're going to be so make sure you've got the right kind of nutrition that you need if you need electrolytes in your right. in your water there were a couple of hot days just make sure you've got those things with you um, enough places although there were plenty of places to stop and we found you know a, a lot of opportunities to be able to you know take a break uh, to get, you know, a, a, a coffee or in a couple of cases, I'm maybe a, <laughs> or a beer or something like that, if it was, you know, the end of the day. Um, but yeah, the, the trail is just so well organized and so well designed well that you're not like out in the wilderness. You're, you're in well-marked trails. 
um, with places to stop along the way, sometimes sneaking through villages and, uh, and towns. Uh, very little on the on any busy roads, and this is an important point because I think they've made some changes in the last few years in this particular route. In that uh, you're staying off the main roads and you're so we on had a, a boardwalk, sidewalk, streets, trail, dirt trail, sand trail, um, yeah. some some rocky trail, not much uh, forested trail. Uh, a little bit of everything, and I wore I wore the same shoes every day. I wore a pair of Hoka boots, and we've got a link down here to all the gear we had. Every piece of gear we had, just check out the link. It's on our it's a web it's a blog on our post on our website website, and with links to all the things that we had. But I had boots, and you had uh, trail trail yeah. trail shoes, right? And I also make a plug for a hiking pole. Um, I don't use poles uh, traditionally, but in this case. The pole made a big difference, and I'm a believer now. And and I think that from now on, when I do hiking, um, I'm going to be using uh, using a pole because it would really it relieved the the stress on my legs a lot, and uh, it really made the distance know, I, easier. Right? We, yeah, we both used a pole. We each, we each had one pole. Right. Although lots of people use two. So um, okay, uh, next up, and so and so that <laughs> that's all the logistics and what we carried. Um, then in the morning, we would, so we didn't do this alone. We actually had a fabulous couple come and join us. We met them in the Go With Less. Here is a link to um, their video group. Uh, Go With Less is a group that we met that are other people who are living a nomad life. We met a couple, Kirsten and Peter, who we had met virtually and became friends virtually. And they were in Peru and said, what are you doing next? And we said, we'll hike in the Camino. And they said, can we come? And we said, sure. So it was really, really great to have another couple with us. We could do couple time, we could do boy time, we could do girl time, we could do mixed couple time, we could do alone time, and we did the entire time. So sometimes they were at the same hotels with us, sometimes they weren't, uh, sometimes we had lunch with them, sometimes we didn't. It just, you know, it was just whatever kind of, we go with the flow was kind of the, the yeah. theme of hanging out right. with another couple, and that was really wonderful. And here's a picture of them. Um, and as, as, as we learned throughout the Camino is everybody walks their own Camino. Some people need silence, some people need to chat, some people need to sit and draw, some need to meditate, some need to meet other people, and everything is the right answer. Uh, so. We would get up about six, we would arrive to town about two. When we got to town, we would usually try to eat something and check into our hotel, rest, get out of the heat of the day, and then uh, the, there's definitely a siesta time in Spain from around two or three to about five or six when everything is closed, including places where you can get dinner or late lunch. And um, then we would get up and go out and maybe go to the grocery store and pack up for our treats and our snacks for the next day. One tip is we learned that don't stay at places that have breakfast. Uh, that's It's a waste of money. Um, you'll want to leave yeah. before breakfast is served because usually breakfast isn't served between, before 7.30 or 8. And then you can get a picnic basket from them for breakfast and it's usually like, a ham sandwich and a boxed orange juice or something. So it's just, it wasn't what we wanted to eat for breakfast. And so we would go to the grocery stores and buy breakfast beforehand. Yeah, unless you like a ham sandwich and a box of orange juice, then it's perfect. <laughs> uh, so, uh, um, yeah. so we, uh, the total, let me see. Now, <laughs> see that over here? These are all the different totals of uh, the steps that we did every day. So. Our goal was to do 100 miles. So Steve went on to Google and mapped out 100 miles as Google would walk it. Google is a lying bitch. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, you know, and what we learned is the trail is different than if you just walked a straight line right. on the road from point A to point B, which is the way Google is going to map you. And like I said, most of the trails are, are off the main roads. Then they snake through neighborhoods and stuff. So, did we walk 100 miles? So, we, what we did every day is we pulled up the all trails iteration of the Camino segment for we, what we were walking that day. So, we pull up all trails and we would walk the all trails, which 99.9% .9 of the time was on the Camino. I mean, yeah. you would walk and yeah. you would see the shells and the markers for the Camino. And so, we, pre we pretty much figure out all trails really was the Camino. So, every day we would walk. So, all trails total distance... So according to all trails, if we added up all the segments, we walked 125.1 miles. Now, when you get to Santiago and you tell them what you walked, they will tell you officially what you walked according to what they think you walked. Well, they think we walked 120 miles and we have, and Kirsten and Peter paid for the extra distance 
certificate that said they walked 120 miles. We, on the other hand, apparently I walked there and back <laughs> because on, on my, excuse me, on my Garmin, I tracked every day and it ranged from 10.3 miles to 19.7 miles, according to my Garmin. Um, and my total steps were 334,545 steps or a total of 163.4 miles. So as typical, Chris was walking circles around <laughs> all of us. So somewhere between, uh, we walked between 120 miles and 163 miles in order to complete 100 miles. <laughs> so, hey, um, it is what it is. And we loved every minute of we it. Loved, we did love every minute of it. <laughs> so uh, when, we got to, when we got to Santiago, it was very nice. We pulled into the square. There's all these inter people finishing the, the walk, hugs and kisses and pictures and silent moments and chances to, if we hadn't done it by then, we unburdened our particular rock that we had carried with us and our particular shell that we'd also carried with us, kind of a Camino tradition where you, you carry those uh, rock and a shell with you the entire way. And then when you get there, you unburden them and the... And the, and the burdenness that you have with those rocks and shells. Yeah, and it's, it's an amazing celebration. Again, mm -hmm. we, we've been there in November, so we kind of saw it firsthand what it was like. And, and then to go back and experience that on ourselves after, you know, being uh, on the trail for 14 days, walking for 10 days, and getting to this final destination <clears throat> that people are coming from many, many different yeah. trails, not just the trail that we were on. They're coming from France. They're coming from different places Northern Spain, in, yeah. in Spain, from uh, for different routes from Portugal. And they're all converging in this one particular uh, square. Yeah. And someone, uh, before we say what, what we did after that, I forgot to say, someone asked us about elevation. So the first six days of hiking were relatively flat. And then the last four hiking days, the we had one mountain. One day was one mountain. One day was two mountains. The next day was another mountain. And then the third, the last day was completely uphill the entire way so and the last day was the longest day and so the elevation gain on the longest day was about 2200 feet so i don't know what the total elevation gain across the entire trail was but it was flat and then we started having to basically go over mountains to get up to santiago yeah from so. being you know from a, a denver hiking this was nothing this was literally a walk in the park this is this is an easy <laughs> i was tired <laughs> No, this, I mean, the, you talk about elevation yeah, gain, and it's like going up a hill. It was yeah. nothing, I think, a twice I maybe was a little bit out of breath and needed to stop, you and, know, over 14 days. And we, I mean, granted, we had long days of um, the last day, depends on who looks at the numbers and where, but, I mean, we had 15 to 20 mile days. You could do it four or five miles a day at a time. It just depends on how much time you have. Yeah, and then, again, other routes have much more elevation gain. You know, there are routes that go through the Pyrenees Mountains and, and such, so they're there are certainly other routes if you're looking for that, you know, the amazing vistas and, and you know, challenging, you know, uphill climbs, they're, they're, they're yeah, available. Again, you can do the Camino you want to do. So, right. so anyway, so then um, after we kind of hugged each other and had our final pictures with Kirsten and Peter, then uh, we had a little go with me, go with less meetup where we ran into another friend who had just finished the Camino. Hi, Amy. Glad to see you um, again. A friend from Little Rock. And um, then the next day, we went to the Pilgrim Mass at noon. And again, you don't have to be Catholic by any means, but you go into the cathedral, giant cathedral, every seat is filled. There, standing and, room and only. Standing room only, people sitting on the floor. <laughs> I'm sure the Catholic Church is very happy. They've got all these people coming in every day. And uh, the, the, the sermon is in Spanish. And again, you don't have to know Spanish to kind of get a gist for what was happening. But... Um, I, for me, I really felt like I was being honored and seen for something pretty spectacular that I had done. And I really had a moment where I was so proud that my body did that. I kind of felt like my body was my best friend and my best friend was along on the ride with me. And I just feel really complete that my my body was able to do what I asked her to do and it was just a real humbling and honorable moment to know that I could do that how about you yeah yeah that's great the um you know the 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 ceremony for me that was you know really just it's a, just a, a spiritual experience again you do not have to be Catholic to do this um but it, it was a it was a beautiful 
um, uh, ceremony and and just really a joyful time and a, and a time you can you're just gathering you know with thousands of people that are you know in this uh, particular uh, service um, yes it's in Spanish but it pick up you know some of the words and uh, it, uh, it was just just a joyful experience so to, to finish off the whole two weeks so will we do it all over again and how will we do it differently um, so yeah. yes <laughs> Yes, I would. I definitely want to do it again. I would probably do the northern route, which leaves out of San Sebastian and goes along the, the northern coast of Spain. What I what I think we didn't do well was that because we didn't stay in the Aberguis, we didn't really meet a lot of people. We would be on the trail and we'd have small conversations, especially as we heard people speaking English along the trail. You know, have where are you from and what are you doing conversations. But I think in the Aberguis, you get a much deeper interaction with people and get very spiritual about why you're doing it and what the passion is and your reason for being conversations which we really didn't get hanging out in the hotels and i yeah. I, I, I miss that i don't know that i'd stay in an aubergine just because i need a bed a quiet bed and a hot shower but um I, we need to figure out somehow to kind of embrace that next time we do the commune what about you yeah i'm going to take a little a little different tack there's a lot of people who walk this as as solo travelers and they are definitely on a more spiritual, meditative, contemplative um, path, if you will. We're all on the same path. And I could see doing this a different route and possibly doing it um, by myself and possibly just taking the time to have that solitude and, and have that uh, experience walking this path um, uh, and, and really having that, that additional inner, inner reflection and meditative time. Uh, so, so yeah, I definitely so would, be, would do it again. You want to have less time with me. Huh? <laughs> I get it. I... I don't take it personally. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Buen Camino, it was a, a wonderful time. We totally recommend it. Uh, any, if you if you like to hike or if you like to walk, I don't know, was this a walk or a hike? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, both. It's, it's a question. Yeah, it's is both. it a walk or a hike? It's, I mean, a, it's a t Again, it's the first time I've done a multi-day experience 10 like miles this. a day at least. Uh, 10 miles a day at least, yeah. Yeah. Great um, experience. Uh, if... If you are a nomad and you regularly walk 10 miles a day in your normal nomad activities, like a lot of us do, walking around the cities and doing all the sightseeing and tourism, you could easily do this hike for sure. Well, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed all the pictures along the way. Anyway, ask questions. Have you ever considered walking the Camino? Which one would you do? Where would you go? Or is there a, or would you not do it? Is there, you're just not inspired by walking the Camino. And that's okay, too. Are you inspired by walking someplace else? Please share your multi-day hiking locations that you're thinking about so we can check those out and maybe do those. Next up for us, the Cary Camino. Cary Camino. The Cary Camino What's here that? in Ireland. Here in Ireland. Um, but we're here in Dublin for the next week hanging out and then we're off to a house sit and we're in, we're in Ireland for the whole summer. So if you're coming to Ireland, let us know and we'll hang out together. Talk to you later.